Rings of Power Episode 5 is here, and I'm one of the few people that is still enjoying the show and has really liked it since the beginning. If you also are enjoying the show, then you are certainly in the right place, and if you're one of the people who absolutely hates it, that's okay. Make sure to share your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and let's start talking about this brand new episode in a full spoiler review. Now, the thing with Lord of the Rings, and just to kind of give a bit, little bit of background context, I love the first two episodes with a lot of the mythology building, with a lot of the production, and everything of that nature. Episodes three and four, I liked, but it feels like, all right, let's start grinding the wheels. Let's start moving this story a little bit faster at this point, because now we're five hours in on this episode, and now I'm starting to feel some of the pacing. And the thing I like to always say about TV is TV reviews are hard to do because you might like one episode, you might hate one episode, you might be wondering where the choices that they are going to, and then you see the finale for the entire season, you're like, oh... I feel like this could have been better overall in an entire package. It seems like they really front-loaded it in the first two episodes. And we've seen that in a lot of Disney Plus shows where a lot of shows say, like Book of Boba Fett, which I thought had some really good episodes in the beginning, had some great ones towards the middle. And then the finale was okay when you look at the entire buildup. WandaVision, same thing, loved the first, like, 75% of it, didn't love the back half. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, same thing. And I've always gotten worried when it comes down to shows like this. I'm very thankful to say that I think this is hands down definitively when you look at the story of it all. This is the best episode of the Rings of Power yet. And I say that because we finally made progression in all of these characters ways to now where I'm like, all right, next week seems to be one of the episodes that's finally going to move this story along because last week's episode was really much more character development and giving those and it's okay to have character development but i think they really needed to intersect it and put it into certain other scenes to connect some episodes but this is the episode that feels all right this is the penultimate one we are moving forward and now we have six seven and i think eight we have three more episodes to really flesh out the story i could be wrong i think it might be nine episodes but again we're doing this on the cuff so i'm not gonna look it up right now but that is one of the things that I'm interested to see how they're able to develop this. And like I've mentioned in previous reviews, I'm a novice when it comes to Lord of the Rings. All I want is a good fantasy show. And while I thought the first two episodes were absolutely incredible, I definitely think that production-wise this show still remains top tier. But when it comes down to story, I definitely think this is one that's getting a little bit too deep for my bridges. And I know it is pissing off a lot of Tolkien fans and Lord of the Rings fans. And that's okay to feel that way. Like, I, I understand you. I'm not that close to this source material at all. So I'm watching this more as, again, just someone who wants to enjoy a new fantasy show and be taken to Middle Earth because there are a lot of other fantasy shows that I enjoy that maybe take some liberties when it comes down to certain things like this. So jumping into this review and really diving into this all, I do want to start with, and the way that I like to talk about this is going character by character. And the, the character I actually want to start with the most this week around is, of course, kind of the whole thing with Elrond and Durin because I truly for me they have been one of the biggest standstones of this entire series and I love the relationship between Elrond and Durin and really much that friendship that banter I think that is some of the heart of this entire show and one of the best things about it every time it goes back to those two I am fully engaged 1000% and just again Elrond is a great character I love what they're building him up in here and having this entire episode really center on that one dinner scene between Gilgalad, Elrond, Durin, and all those people, and having this conversation, Elrond, or not Elrond, Durin makes the point of, like, this table, this belongs to the El, or this belongs to the dwarves, where did you get this? And, you know, we end up finding out that that was a lie, but again, the connection to the story finally makes way, where we see Gilgalad, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, so I do very much apologize, and Elrond having this conversation, seeing the elves, or not the elves, the, the leaves wither and have darkness over them and again finally seeing what the point of this story is and what does that mean and he lets him know that hey we'll either have to leave or we will perish and this will be the end of the elves forever if you do not figure this out now well is that the choice is it not i'm starting to get some sinister feelings right there with that if that is completely true and i say that because we already have the mention of the new dark health out there which we're going to talk about but these are elements that again are interesting to me and again seeing that durin knows his friendship with elrond elrond is so open with him and he goes you know we can try and convince my dad and go from there and i and i really did like that storyline now the other thing that we talk about is Arendir, and of course, the Bron Bronin, 
Bronin and that whole entire group, those people. Of course, Arndir, you know, he was the one who kind of came back to warn them about the Dark Elves, the Orcs, and everything like this. And if you go and, you know, bow to them, you know, they'll give up. But not everyone wants to do that, and they're worthy and ready for a fight, which I think that's going to be something coming up, which I'm really excited to see some more action in Lord of the Rings. I don't come to Lord of the Rings for the action, but, you know, if you look at that original trilogy and you remember some of the sequences from the book, some of the action is just top tier in there, and I really like that. I'm hoping we get something coming up soon. But the interesting aspect of this entire subplot was seeing how that old man tried like bringing the the older like or um Theo who has that key now that we know of and he didn't and then he ends up going there and bowing to them Saron I am here for you yada 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 and the guy throws a sword down says bound in blood and we don't see what happens but I'm assuming he ended up killing that kid and I think that is one thing to show that the darkness is looming. And again, like I've mentioned in previous episode reviews, is that this entire series always feels like something is looming. This darkness, this feeling of darkness is just coming. And I feel like once it does, it's going to absolutely overshadow this. And that's why I go as far to say, no matter how this season goes, I'm going to be very open to a season two. Not just because I'm enjoying the majority of the season, but because I'm interested to see where a season two goes. Specifically, if you're doing all of this setup in the first season, there's a lot of greatness in there that you can really dive into. And again, I understand a lot of you Tolkien fans are not happy with this series, and that's fine. Like, if you don't like this series and you're just hate watching my videos and you're hate watching this series, I get it. I understand your issues. I I have huge complaints when it comes down to the Marvel Universe and the Star Wars Universe at times, and those are two of my biggest franchises of my entire life. Same with the DC Universe. I'm a, definitely more of a superhero and sci-fi person than I am fantasy, but I do love a good fantasy show, so I do understand that, but interesting aspects there. Interesting to see where that key goes, specifically seeing that statue and things like that and that whole kind of art, like that conversation they have. Very looking forward to seeing where that goes. The next piece that we need to talk about is, of course, the Brandyfoot. I'm loving the Brandyfoot. I love them so much. I think all of them, like Poppy and, of course, Eleanor, I think they are some of the best aspects of this entire show. And I think the Harfoots themselves are really fun. Now, I understand that. I think from my understanding, they were created for just the concept of the show. But I like the context of this and the stranger coming in, you know, them kind of disowning it and the Brandyfoot people being like, we are okay, we're accepting of him and him ending up saving everyone from those wolf-like creatures, which is the visual effects for those were really good. There's interesting aspects. You see him making frost. There's a lot of still conversations that we're having here. And again, I want to hear your guys' theories and thoughts on what you think that character is. He's the stranger. There's going to be some revelation to him. Conversations at work have really come down to that this might be Gandalf. Again, I'm not sure on the entire lore, but one of the friends of mine who works there really loves Lord of the Rings. And he thinks that this could be a Gandalf. I saw one theory that was a Balrog. And that would be pretty cool to see where Balrogs come from. Because clearly from the trailer, we are going to be getting one this season. So... Fire off in the comments what your theories are if you if you give a shit to care. Um, but I, I really like their storyline this week. And the last but not least is Numenor. Everything going on in Numenor. So we got Galadriel there. I'm kind of sliding through all the character notes that I have here. We have Galadriel. We have Hallbrand. We have uh, Elendil. We have Aaron. Isl Isildur, the, the son. The queen. Uh, Farazan and Keeman. I, I, and I'll be honest here. Let me let me tell you right now. Everything that happens to do with Farazan, Keeman, uh, Isildur, whatever the the son, Aaron, I, I do not give one shit about. I I think all those characters literally have mean no purpose for me. Every time it goes back to their storyline, I find it boring. I think it completely drags down Numenor's entire plot, which I really loved at first, and now I'm. Like, this episode in particular, I think it was one of the weaker aspects every time it went back to them. But when it does go to Galadriel, when it does go to the Queen, when it does go to Elendil, when it does go to Hallbrand, I think these are the characters that they should be focusing more in on. And seeing that ship go out at the very end, seeing them all kind of respect Galadriel and seeing them all respect each other just lets me know that, again... Darkness is looming, and Numenor, as we know, will fall one day. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. 
and how it plays into it because the political aspects of this all and how some people do not want to support this war are interesting to see if anyone in this army is actually going to be a part of that. Also a fun tidbit, I really like the scene between Gladriel fighting against and kind of training the men about how what really works when it comes down to fight scenes. Again, really great stuff. And again, development between all these characters overall that is making me very appreciate. And Hallbrand, for the most part, and Galadriel, there's this instincts between them that, again, you can tell while Hallbrand is pissed, and he gives a little bit more depth to Galadriel this week, and Galadriel finally opens up and is not this one-note character, which I know some people have been complaining about, but I was, like, happy to finally see something from that. So, Rings of the Power... Episode 5, I think, is a really great continuation of this story. Again, I'm thoroughly enjoying the show. I wish they would just move the show a little bit faster. I'm hoping the next few episodes will finally do that. It's okay to give me backstory. It's okay to give me character development. But this story's got to move forward. And I'm not just talking with action. I genuinely mean just with the story. You've set up these characters. You've set up these locations. Give me that care and emphasis as you are developing the story. I get you have five or six seasons planned for this. But you got to make me care. you got to make this move forward. And that's my one thing with this. So I'm still enjoying the show. I think this was a great episode. If I were to rank all the episodes so far, I'd probably do one, two, four. No, I'd probably do one, two, five, four, three right now. And I'm hoping next week continues this uptick of everything going on. But let me know down below what your guys' thoughts are. Thank you so much again for watching this. You guys are seriously the best. Hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll make sure to talk Rings of Power with you guys later down below in the comment section. So, of course, until next time. Stay classy.